Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Beta FPV Beta 75 Pro 2 Micro Brush Swoop. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head the doors and test it out. Inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you're getting two 1S 300mAh LHV batteries, an extra 25 degrees mount for the FPV camera, two jumpers that will enable you to use 1S type of batteries and a piece of foam for securing it, and the user manual is available online. So as you can see, a charger and extra propellers are not included, and you should get them separately. When you buy the Pro 2, you can choose between a plug and play version, which doesn't come with a receiver, or a bind and fly version, where the Futaba and Efrosky FCC receivers are built into the flight controller, and the Flysky, DSMX, and Efrosky LBT versions are using external receivers. Unlike the Beta 75X, which is using 1103 motors, the Pro 2 is using 0802 12,000 kV motors. Under the canopy, you can find a customized version of the Beta FPV Z02 all-in-one camera. The camera features a SEMA sensor, its picture format is NTSC, and it is connected to a VTX, which supports 48 channels, features smart audio using TBS smart audio protocol, and its output strength is 25 mV. The camera is fixed to the quadcopter using a 35 degrees mount, but as I mentioned before, a 25 degrees mount is included as well. The linear antenna is soldered to the VTX, so if you'd like to upgrade it, you will need to desolder it and then solder a new antenna. On the bottom of the quadcopter, you can find an F4 flight controller with an integrated 5A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. It comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 4, and it is using two PH2 connectors for connecting two 1S type of batteries in series. Since I've got the Efrosky FCC version, the receiver is built into the flight controller, and in order to bind it, you will have to power up the quadcopter and then press the bind button for about 2 seconds until the green LED indicator is going to turn solid, which means now the quadcopter is in binding mode. By default, the built-in Efrosky SPI receiver is set to Efrosky X, which stands for mode D16, so after you enter binding mode, just press bind, channels 1 to 8, telemetry on, and after a successful bind, the green LED indicator is going to start flashing. Then press exit, and as you can see, we're getting the RSSI from the receiver. It's also possible to bind the built-in Efrosky receiver on mode D8, so what you need to do is to change the SPI RX receiver to mode Efrosky D, just instead of using mode D16 on your transmitter, use mode D8. According to Beta FPV, if you're having issues with mode D16 where the quadcopter just falls from the sky, you should use mode D8 instead. However, I didn't experience this problem using mode D16. The weight of the Beta 75 Pro 2 is 27.6 grams, not including the included 300 mAh 1S batteries, and 42.7 grams including them. So it's a little bit lighter than the Mobula 7, and also lighter than the Beta 65X, and much lighter than the Beta 75X, which unfortunately I don't have. In addition, the frame of the Pro 2 seems much more flexible than the frame of the 65X, and it looks similar to the version 2 of the Mobula 7 frame. On the back of the frame, you can find this part for mounting the VTX antenna, and also this one for mounting an LED strip. The next thing I've done is to head outdoors and test the Beta 75 Pro using 2S and 1S type of batteries, but since the flight footage is a little bit long, I'm going to go ahead and give you my conclusion. First of all, I can tell you that Beta FPV got it right this time, as I wasn't really impressed with the Beta 65X. The Pro 2, on the other hand, is with the same league with the very popular Happy Model Mobula 7. It flies great both on 1S and 2S like batteries, it is using a very durable frame, and the only issue I had problems with is with the camera, which didn't come focused. And if it happens to you as well, after focusing the camera, you will need to apply some UV glue in order to mount the lens, otherwise you're going to experience jello. Another advantage of the Pro 2 is that it is using pretty efficient motors. You can experience about 4 minutes of flight time if you're not going to push the throttle, and in terms of range, I got to around 350 meters, but you have to remember that on your way back, the linear antenna is not going to face your direction, 
which means that the FLIP feed is not going to be that great. Now, by the way, just as a reminder, the X version can work only with 2S LiPo batteries, whereas the Pro version can work with 1S and 2S LiPo batteries. So you have to keep it in mind because if you want to fly your quadcopter indoors, it's going to be very hard for you to do with the X version. So this is another advantage of the Pro. And the 1S LiPo batteries that I used are these GNB 450 mAh 1S LHV batteries, which fit pretty well on the bottom of the quadcopter and won't even require you to use the included foam. Now as you're about to see in the flight footage, the voltage of the battery dropped after taking off and a possible solution would be to change the PH2 connector into an XT30 connector. However, it's going to be harder for you to use 1S LiPo batteries after you're going to change the connector. So I only advise you to change the connector if you're not going to use 1S LiPo batteries. And if you are going to use 1S LiPo batteries, I think that you should better stick to the PH2 connector. So overall, I really enjoyed flying this quadcopter. And the only points for improvement that I have for Pita FPV is that first of all, I think that they should use a more flexible canopy because this one is going to break pretty easily. And another point for improvement is that if they can to use the Z02 all-in-one camera, since I think it can be a nice add-on to use a 200 millivolt VTX. The next thing I'm going to do is to quickly go over beta flight configuration, and then I'm going to show you the flight footage using 1S and 2S type of batteries. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about the Beta 75 Pro 2, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.